morning, Jack Holland. <laughs> and we are currently on the M1, otherwise known as the Southeastern Freeway. Correct. Going to uh, at this point. <laughs> oh, we're, we're heading to Victoria to sort of Melbourne. But uh, our first stop is going to be breakfast somewhere. But we're actually going to a little town of Whittlesea, just north of Melbourne, uh, for a couple of nights to get away from not really much at all in Adelaide. <laughs> but we're going to catch up with um, family, some family, and tourists, tourists who want to see the Great Ocean Road. So. So it's about, what, well, it's just seven o'clock now. We left home about an hour ago. We stopped for coffee, which is always important, of course. Um, a bit overcast, though. Yeah. And we're just deciding uh, which route to take, given uh, we don't want to come up from the south via Melbourne. We, we don't want to come that way. No. But probably a bit restricted coming from the north because there's been floods all around this region and we've been looking at uh, Vic Roads uh, online and they do have some a uh, lot of road closures so at the moment we're heading for Nil, Nil. Horsham and then we'll check the roads again and see we what's will. open and what's closed so until coffee then, time coffee time Oh, oh, you can hear that noise there, there's someone trimming trees and cutting timber. But uh, here we are in the small town of Serviston, just over the Victorian border. So Serviston was a thriving little township many, year, many years ago. And this beautiful building is still here, almost intact. We're going to have a look. Uh, there was always a dispute about the border in South Australia and Victoria which if you follow the border from the sea up to the Murray River when you get there you'll notice there's um, the border hits the river and then it backtracks heads east along the Murray is the platform still trains still come through here It is. So it was closed in 1986 by the looks of it. Uh, anyway, the border uh, was disputed for many, many years. South Australia thought they owned a bit and Victoria thought they owned a bit. And Victoria won. So it's a good idea to have a look at the map of Australia where the border is. And if you go up towards Renmark, you'll notice that the border is uh, further west than what the South Australians wanted. And here we are, it's a beautiful old building. Any juicy gossip about the service time? Well, the, um, let me just... Maybe a train will come well, through. The, the dispute was finally settled around 1914 in favour of Victoria. Yeah, so Victorians again. Serviston Township was well equipped with the businesses in the early years, including general stores, bakery, butcher, blacksmith, boarding houses, stables, temperance hotel, coffee oh, for those palace, that don't like to drink. and wine bar. The station has three levels, with the middle level occupied by the customs office. General Waiting Room, SA Booking and Parcels Office, Victorian Booking and Parcels Office, Dining Room, Refreshment Room, Kitchen Area, Railway Employees Laboratory, Public Closets, Ladies Closets, I love the ladies and a ladies waiting, bedroom, uh, oh. ladies waiting Room. There's well. also a staircase leading up to a bedroom and a bathroom in the attic. The lower levels were being the lower levels housed a lamp room, prison area for when prisoners were being transferred across borders, cellars, guard rooms, porter rooms, customs, storerooms, and the purveyor's storeroom. The lamp room also doubled as a mortuary when deceased persons were being transferred from interstate. There you go. It's just so it was quite a busy little place. Yeah. Serviston. It's only about, what, two and a half, three kilometres off the highway. 
um, between Border Town and Nil. Well here we are, we finally made it to Woodall Sea. There's the beautiful, clean, gleaming bathroom. And here's the beautiful, clean, gleaming Jackie. <laughs> and here's the room. It's very neat and tidy, looks fairly newish. Um, so it's good, we're here for two nights. Yeah. And then over here we have the thoroughly modern kitchen which consists of a microwave and a fridge and a kettle and some modern art on the wall so all in all little courtyard we can sit out here tonight and chew the fat so to speak um, looking forward to dinner and a bit of a sit down it was a good trip we stopped at a couple of places for a late breakfast and a late lunch and uh, it was a longer drive than we thought. Anyway, there you go. Woodall Sea Room 10 in the Woodall Sea Motel. Good morning. Good morning. It's a beautiful sunny morning. We've had our coffee, tidied ourselves up a little bit, and we're on the way to a, first stop is a Black Saturday Bushfire Memorial. We're just leaving Woodall Sea now. And we're on the Whittlesea Yay Road. Yay, Yay is spelled yeah. <laughs> so um, we're not going to Yay though because there was some a bit of flooding up there. We're going to swing down to a place called Yarra Glen later on. But we're going to see if there's a, a, a gorgeous little cafe or something where we can have some brunch in momentarily. But uh, first thing we'll probably end up at this memorial to Black Saturday bushfires which actually think, devastated this part of Australia some years ago. I'm not sure if you remember the year Jackie. We're <laughs> going to find out when we get we to the memorial. Well, there, there'll be more information. Lots of information there, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So just a little day trip while we're up here to have a look at a couple of them. We're going to, what's it got, the Gulf Station. Station. Pioneer, it's a Pioneer experience. <laughs> But I forgot my Cobra hat and my dryer bone, uh, so I have to put up with socks and uh, t-shirt. I forgot my petticoats. Yeah, <laughs> but it's got board shorts and thongs. And... Alrighty. So here's the memorial, including a wooden fork and a takeaway package. See that? It's gone. There's, there's a bin not that far away, really. Anyway, this is one of a couple of memorials up here. <coughs> the bushfires were started on February the 7th, 2009. 173 people died. 430,000 hectares of bush and farmland were burnt. And it's, you can just see as you drive around here, uh, the effects of it still to this day. Um, Old burnt trees are still around, but um, could do a little bit of maintenance, I would have thought. But these are the locals who died here on the day. But uh, there's a, another one as well somewhere that we're going to hunt down, which is much more uh, impressive. We're here at the St. Andrew's Black Saturday Memorial. So 14 people in the township died on that day out of the 173 that were killed. Um, we're taking the middle path. 
up to this memorial there, it's supposed to be also a spectacular view. The town was saved at the last minute by a wind change. It's a bit hard to see. And there we go. We give tribute to those who have suffered so much grief and so much loss and so much trouble, struggle. We honour their courage in rebuilding their lives, strengthening families and community. We acknowledge with heartfelt gratitude the selflessness and generosity and the tireless efforts of so many people, known and unknown, in acts of protection, of giving and supporting. We celebrate the human spirit in adversity, the will to share and encourage each other and for all that is good. We remember and mourn the 14 people from our community of St Andrews who lost their lives in the fires of Black Saturday. And with respect, we remember the 173 lives lost across Victoria. So we're down here on the lower tier now, which is sort of forms a loop around the tier, which is just up the hill there which is dedicated specifically to the town but this uh, these rocks are placed remembering those from other parts of uh, this area that weren't in the town and they're remembered as well it was devastating it was huge fires but when you look over the hills and you see how devastating it could have been and how scary it might have been to see a fire racing up the hill towards you and you've got nowhere to go. So we're just following this road which we think will eventually take us back to the uh, uh, bitumen and the road that we want to get back onto anyway. Um, if not, well, we'll be lost forever in the... Yeah, oh, here we go, big <laughs> buildings. Civilization. Yeah. Anyway, yes, we've just sort of decided to keep moving forward rather than backtrack because that's the way we roll. <laughs> it was interesting to actually see um, some houses that the devastation still there to see. Yes, they've walked away, haven't they? Yeah, and then others uh, have rebuilt and yeah. they look fairly. Um, what, what's the word for it? Uh, a bit more resilient to fire. Oh, yeah. the, 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 the way they've built in face. And they might have changed the building yeah. code for this area to yeah. reflect that. The architecture is <coughs> yeah, interesting. Um, but yeah, I guess for some people they were that traumatised they couldn't come back. Particularly the young family. Oh, surrenders. Anyway, the memorial was, I'm, I'm glad we went there. It wasn't out of morbidity. I find memorials uh, interesting with a reflection of the place you're in and the history of the place. Um, and I remember these fires, we were actually in Melbourne and were flying back to Adelaide and seeing the start of it with no idea of what, what was about to happen. Bridge under troubled water. That's it. <laughs> we were going to cross the bridge, but we can't. It's underwater. Bridge under troubled water. Under troubled water. <laughs> smells a bit here, a bit dank, wet mud. There's little frogs. This is allegedly the site of an Aboriginal massacre in 1840. A battle of Yering. The battle of Yering. What was the guy's name? That's the Wurundjeri people lived here, led by Jagger Jagger. He had been captured and was being held at the, at the Yering homestead. Yeah. But this is all park now, so not really sure where anything is.
Ready for it? We're going through the creek. <laughs> well, nothing well, frightens a triton. Yeah. <laughs> Do you need the other four? Here we go. Hold on tight. Oh, we're so adventurous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Barely got up to the wheel hubs. What does it? It's the end of the track. And it no, goes up no there. Pop. It goes up round. Does it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've got to swing hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Straight, don't I? <laughs> well, look, I wasn't expecting that. But <laughs> this is okay. It's, but if it was really soft, it might have not gone through. Because there's only a small shovel and you'll get tired really quickly. <laughs> well, we found it. Black bamboo. Growing wild. Amazing. Oh, it's going to have a little sticky beak. I didn't know they had plastic in the 1860s. There's old beds here. Bomb! <laughs> Is there? Oh, look what we found. A smoking device. That's well made too. There's beds and there's a couple of chairs in this room and a bed. The thing is you find. Yeah, pity. Well we found the building but we didn't find the case. We don't want to go poking and prodding. No, it looks too like snaky. Things without legs that have got. Nasty teeth, and, uh, and you know what? To me, it's not about the cache so much as finding places like this. Something historic. Yeah, it's cool. With a new downpipe. New pipe. gutter. Well, newish. Oh yeah. It's already full though. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Here we are. A bit of history. Thank you.